Welcome to From Temp to Hire, Staffing Success Stories. The show where work-life harmony meets job satisfaction. Listen to how these professionals have advanced their careers, increased their salaries, and got their foot in the door with top-notch tech and healthcare companies across the country. Learn how you can land that high-paying remote job, negotiate that pay raise, or get more work flexibility so you can start living now. Beyond recruitment, we're a staffing agency dedicated to guiding career-minded professionals to a better work-life harmony, better mental health, and more career satisfaction. Enjoy the show. Devon Evans is a CSR professional, passionate about all things healthcare. She turned her temporary position into a permanent role at her company. She is resilient, focused, and a career-minded professional that has proven what you put into a position at work is exactly what will get you to the next level. Thank you for joining us, Siobhan. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So just to get started, you connected with WM and started working with us in the summer. Can you share your experience of how the group interview went and how overall you felt your recruiter at the time, Zachary, prepared you for the group interview and the kind of questions that you guys went over? Zachary encouraged me to continue being my friendly, outgoing, and genuine self. It's one of the things, it's like the few attributes that he said that would help me shine during the group interview. And so he wanted me to engage in asking questions. And since it was on a Zoom call, like a Zoom meeting, uh, display an interested uh, look as far as for body language. So, you know, to smile, to to nod when necessary and to ask, you know, while asking questions at the same time. So just to to just be fully engaged. He didn't really know what, how the group interview was going to go per se. He just told me that, you know, just to do those things and I would be okay. Okay. And, um, I can't give you the details, but I can give you a, a roadmap. I mean, group interviews you expect for them to ask you interview questions right or to some effect and there were none they just told us about the position what it all entailed and while they were giving us that information they were expecting for you to ask ask questions at that time so he didn't really know what to expect. So when I told him afterwards how it went, because he called me, he said, well, how'd it go? Well, oh, he called you right after? He did. He called me right <laughs> after. And he was like, well, how'd it go? Is everything okay? I said, yeah, everything went as well as to be expected. It wasn't what I expected, but <laughs> it went well. <laughs> so he was he was just a real joy to to call and um, to talk to and everything like that. So it's awesome. So in terms of showing up to work, our team, we like to use the word rock star employees. And that just speaks to showing up in a way that's helpful to the team that, you know, contributes. So I want to know for your definition, how do you describe a rock star employee and how do they show up to work? So the nerd in me actually created an an, uh, an acronym for this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that acronym. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, so, um, respectful, observant, consistent, kind, studious, transparent. Uh, attendance, you got to show up, resilient. So it's funny that she used that in my bio because that's something that's definitely Mm. necessary. You totally have to be resilient. You got to be able to receive criticism in a a positive um, way. It's actually how my teammate described you when I was talking to her about you. You display that. Like you you, you really live out that value. (laughs) That is awesome. Uh, You know what? I tell whoever that was, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. But those are the words that come to mind when being a rock star employee. In other news, call avoidance is 
not a good thing for customer service representatives. And for our team, we actually noticed an increase in call avoidance in around August. And for those that don't know, call avoidance can be defined as not answering incoming calls, disconnecting the line, call drops, or even unreported system issues. And in some cases, most cases, after the first warning with our associates that are on assignment, the way that the standard standards are set up, the assignment could be ended. Yikes. Why do you think this happens? I would guess that when there's no supervision while working from home, you're bound to have issues. And this is one of many. And when you're in the call, actual call center environment, there's always someone walking around making sure that you, you know, get the help that you need, but also that you're on your P's and Q's, you know? So I'm just going to assume that people are at home in the comfort of their own homes. There's a lot going on. Um, they probably had, you know, emergencies that they just didn't communicate or things of that nature. So I would imagine that some calls just went by the wayside, which is unfortunate, not only for the employee, but the employer, because it makes the company right. look bad. So. Right. Right. Yeah, and you make a good point about working from home. Sometimes it's easier to, oh, let me do a load of laundry or, oh, okay, I still need to make dinner. Let me go ahead and get this started. And oh, you, yeah. your, your hands just find things to do versus if you are at work, that would be your total attention. And maybe, you know, the only thing distracting you would be your phone or maybe another coworker comes over and says something, but having that clear distinction i'm operating at home as if i was at work would i do this at Correct. work okay then i shouldn't be doing this when i'm in my bedroom you know taking calls exactly so that's and that's why one of the attributes of being a rock star employee is being consistent if you don't establish those good habits early you're bound to fail it's it is a known fact it is proven I don't care how you look at it, how you try to play it off. You have to do those things early. So that means mm -hmm. starting on time and actually being early. So if you start on time, then you're late. Mm -hmm. If you're early, then you're on time. That's yeah, because right. you got to get everything all set up and make sure that your space is conducive to what is what it is that you're going to be doing. And for me, taking phone calls at home, there's a million and one things that could go wrong. So, yeah, you definitely have to set the precedent early. Otherwise, right. you're going to be in trouble before you get started. It's not uncommon for our associates to go through real life emergencies while on assignment. We do have standards and we have precedent set in place, but life happens. So how right. do you suggest handling life emergencies while being a rock star employee and maintaining attendance and meeting expectations and metrics. You want to establish good communication early. And also with one of the other words that I use in being a rock star employee is transparency. Not saying you have to tell all of your business, but you got to give them something because they're going to ask those questions. So during an emergency, even though it's an emergency, you don't want to be questioned about your character or the emergency itself. You want to give them just enough to where they know what's going on. So uh, my dad has cancer and uh, he went to the emergency room. Now, mind you, he lives in Birmingham, Alabama, which is about an hour and a half away from where I live. So I had to uh, get the phone call was like crazy and I was frantic and I was, you know, I have really bad anxiety when things go wrong. I'm expecting for things to go bam, bam, bam. Everything's supposed to be in order. But when something goes out of order, I don't know how to function. The OCD, judge me later. Okay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it, just, it was just something that came out of the blue. 
I just got on the phone. Like I just got out of training, just got out on the floor and I was taking calls and I'm just like, oh my God, you know, my dad, he's in trouble. I gotta go. And so you want to follow the procedure that's in place. That's right. important. That's the most important thing. You want to follow the procedure. You want to make sure that you follow that to the T. If you don't follow that, then that's going to be a problem for you. Again, yeah. you want to do what you're supposed to so you don't create problems for yourself later. So, Jalisa and Jessica, Urena, the fabulous women of Wilbur Mickelson, I love them. They were my lifeline. And wow. I can still call them today with anything. And they're still my lifeline. I really appreciate their due diligence, their calling and checking in and things of that nature. And I could, you know, reach out to them at any time. So it was really, I was really grateful for the emergency that I went through. And I'm sure they appreciated how I took the steps, even though I was crying hysterically that day. <laughs> I was a hot mess. So they were really helpful. So and I really didn't have to call Urena, to be honest. I didn't really have to call the staffing agency. Uh, I just decided to do that to cover myself. Because although you are on assignment, when you have things that happen, you definitely want to cover your bases. You don't want to have leave anyone guessing. For those that have not worked with a staffing agency and are unfamiliar with what it's like working with, uh, especially a temp agency. Could you explain a step-by-step -step of WM's process for someone who's looking to get a job through a staffing agency? I've been with, Wilbur Michelson was my third staffing agency that I've ever been associated with. And I tell you what, you guys are, top notch so kudos to you guys for running a tight ship first thing you do you fill out an application there's an assessment that you have to take after completing the application so you complete the assessment and if you do well on the assessment a recruiter calls you back and then you get scheduled for an interview and then once you do well on the interview they and they say you have the position or you were chosen then you get set up for training. The one thing that I liked about Wilbur Michelson is that they place you, like they, they went over your resume as well, and they made sure that your skills fit what you were applying for. So they weren't just throwing you anywhere. Yeah, but that's getting thrown in is especially frustrating when the the job duties on the day are really different from what the offer letter laid out or from what the the hiring manager dictated in the interview. So that's a huge thing that I know so many of our associates have mentioned is I just want to be, and you know, you have some, no one's day-to-day -day duties are to the T, you know, what the, the job description has. There are some additions right. and some, some hats that you'll have to, you know, throw on to, that's just the nature of every position, I think. But having it just a, a general, and it shouldn't be too much, a general idea of what you're doing, and then also consistent, consistent support for duties that are a little bit outside of your wheelhouse makes it a lot less frustrating. Right. What was your biggest aha moment? as you were going through training and coaching with WM and how did you feel that transformed or changed you as a professional? Before, during, and after training, I had coaching sessions about one to two times weekly with Jalisa and, or it would be Jessica or it would be Urena. They all work cohesively with each other. And during those coaching sessions, I was able to express my concerns as well as my likes, <laughs> but you know, about the job or 
about the assignment itself. Warburg Michelson staff was extremely supportive. That made me transform myself by changing my perception of the approach from negative to positive. Uh, I had to take away my thought process as far as, oh, you guys are calling me. What did I do wrong? Because no one's calling you to let you know that you're doing a great job and that they're, the reports that they're getting back on you is extremely positive. But when you're so used to hearing or not hearing anything at all, it makes it a really bad experience. So that was my biggest aha moment. It was the during training and the coaching itself. Just all of it was the best experience I've ever had. And I would definitely do it again. And uh, it definitely transformed. It changed my life in a way that I got the best advice. And I got it in a way that reached me at the level of where I was. That was my aha. Wink. Oh, okay. This can work. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in to the Wilbur Michelson podcast from Temp to Hire Staffing Success Stories. We hope this conversation changed how you see career advancement, job hunting, and staffing agencies. What's one word that stood out to you from today's episode? We're curious for your thoughts. Please leave a review and let us know. For more content similar to this, connect with Wilbur Michelson on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you're on the hunt for your next career opportunity, send your resume to sacramento at wmjobs.com. Sacramento at WMJobs.com. Get hired the WM way.